started with uh, mental mess. We are dividing by 10 and by 100. I'm giving you five minutes to do the test. And the mental mess involved liters, kilograms, grams, meters, and centimeters. Don't leave your answer without indicating what kind of measurement is it. A minute to go. The time constraints prepares them for their honor assessment. They fail the exam not because they didn't know, but because they didn't finish. If they're used to mental maths, then they're used to working smart and fast. Let's finish off. Exchange your books with your friends. At the end of the mental maths, we ask how many has got everything correct. So if we don't exchange books, they will say we got everything correct. 100 liters divided by 10, hamuhelo. 10 liters. Uh, number 2, 180 kilograms divided by 10. 18 kilograms. I think now everyone is there. And on our mental meds, who got everything correct? Let's clap for them. Thank you very much. Keep it up. Uh, to clap for those learners is a very good motivator. Now let's talk about measuring. So give me anything that you are able to measure. Table. We can measure a book. We can measure a chair. Asking them to name things that they can measure also help them to see that we measure every day. Can you tell me about the food that you eat every day? Don't just chow, 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 chow without measuring. Otherwise you become very big, like an elephant. Do you want to be like an elephant? So you must measure what you eat. April. Very good. April. How many apples do you eat per day? Three. Three. Very good. A bread. Yes. In the morning, we eat bread. What else do we measure? We can measure a banana. We measure meat. I was guiding them in the lines of length, mass, and volume because our main topic had to deal with those measurements and the conversions. Now we want to work in our groups. So can we clear our tables? Group leaders, I want you to come to the front. Go and pick the material. We had six groups in the class. Two groups were dealing with measurement of length. Two groups with mass. Two groups with volume. After they have measured, they rotate so that all the learners get the opportunity to deal with all the kinds of measurement units. This group, I want you to go and measure the length of the door and the width of the door. You choose what you are going to use. They had to work together as a group. It was encouraging teamwork. For the learners who are measuring volume, uh, I gave them different containers of different sizes. I gave them the task to record how many 500 mils are going to fill one liter, how many 500 mils are going to fill 2.5 liters, how many 500 mils are going to fill 5 liters. It was so practical that they could record correctly. 500 mils of water. Okay, very good, my boy. For the learners who were measuring length, they used the 30 centimeter ruler, the one meter chalkboard ruler. They also used tape measure. They were measuring different items, the width of the classroom, the length of the door, the width of the window, and they were recording. For the learners who were measuring mass, I gave them the real objects which indicated the weight like sugar, like salt. And I also gave them the measuring balance. The purpose was to compare the weight. If they put, for example, one kg of sugar on the other side, and they were comparing maybe with oranges or potatoes, how many potatoes are equivalent to this one kg of sugar? I saw the learners enjoying when the ba measuring balance was moving. They realized that, okay, so it means three oranges weigh 500 grams. Our next uh, activity was for them to estimate first and to measure the actual. 
first it was fun because their estimations were very far from the actual measurement. But as they went on with the activity, they could correct each other. I want you to give me your estimate of the length of this table. <laughs> quickly, quickly, record three minutes left. Our next stage of the lesson, I wanted them to convert. Let's clean our tables. We need your book and your pen only. You are now writing your classwork from the worksheet. And the group which was measuring length, you are changing meters to centimeters and centimeters to meters. When we went to conversion, I showed my learners the ruler. They all know that it's one meter. But do they know how many centimeters are in that one meter? Who can tell me? Get back to a quarter meter. 25 centimeters. How big is this sugar? One kg. How many grams is one kg? 1,000 grams. Now, I want to use half. This one is half of this one. How big is this one? 500 grams. Yes, we have a smaller one now. 250 grams. We do have learners, we have challenges, and they take time to catch up. So that reference can remind them what the, the teacher said. To round off the lesson, after seeing that the learners were following properly, we also went on to explaining the homework in the form of problem-solving questions. Tandela bought a one kg of polony. She ate three quarters of it. How much polony has left? The learner was able to read. But is the learner able to tell me what's in that sentence? How much polony did Tandela buy? One kg. Very good. And what fraction did Tandela eat? Three quarters. And then how do we get the fraction left? Minus. Most learners think maths is difficult and complicated and not interesting. But when we do it practically, then it makes them relax. It makes them enjoy. It also makes them remember what they did. And taking part it makes them understand more.